in that case, my lord, uh, initially the court asked me to disclose who gave you the register. So this was a petition by CPIL. We had a meeting of CPIL and we decided that, of course, I didn't even know, but we decided to take a principled stand that whistleblower has given it and we can't disclose the name of the whistleblower. So I'm saying that a political party can easily turn around and say, we don't know who has given it. Somebody left it. But this is a bearer bond. Now, my lord, <clears throat> Coming to coming back to the submissions, <clears throat> so I have stated the salient features. Uh, in this, there are one or two other things also that uh, the window, if your lordship turns to page 12 of my written submissions, the window of sale of electoral bonds. Can you come to the three points? To your yes, yes, I'm coming. Lord. You've seen the scheme now. Yeah, let's right. go straight to your submission. Right, right. And now, my lord, coming to my submissions, that they start at page first. Your lordship may see the previous orders of this case, which I have quoted at page 15. government ka justification dikha dete hain theek hai theek hai yes ठीक है चल रही
I was uh, I just wanted to read the justification given by the government for these electoral bonds. At page 14 of my written submissions, I have quoted the relevant part. Paragraph 15 of my written submissions. On 7 1 8 volume 1. Page volume 1, page 14 of my submissions. <clears throat> On 7th January 2018, five days after the in introduction of the scheme, the PIB published an article written by the then Finance Minister on the necessity for introducing electoral bonds. The stand of the government was that expenditures of all political parties runs into thousands of crores. However, there has not been a transparent funding mechanism of the political system. The said PIB released quotes from the then Finance Minister's article. Quote. <clears throat> The conventional system of political funding is to rely on donations. These donations, big or small, come from a range of sources from political workers, sympathizers, small business people, and even large industrialists. The conventional practice of funding political system was to take donations in cash and undertake these expenditures in cash. Sources are anonymous or pseudonymous. The quantum of money was never disclosed. The present system ensures unclean money coming from unidentifiable sources. It is wholly non-transparent system. Most political groups seem fairly satisfied with the present arrangement and would not mind the status quo to continue. The effort, therefore, is to run down any alternative system which is devised to cleanse the political funding mechanism. It further said that most donors are reluctant to disclose the details of quantums of donations given to a political party. A major step was taken by Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee. The Income Tax Act was amended to include a provision that donations made to parties would be treated as expenditure and would thus give a tax advantage to the donor. If the political party disclosed its donations in a prescribed manner, it would also not be liable to pay tax. A political party was expected to file its returns both with the income tax authorities and the election commission. It was hoped that the donors would increasingly start donating money by check. Some donors did start following this practice, but most of them were reluctant to disclose the details of quantum of donation given to a political party. This was because they feared consequences visiting them from political opponents. The law was further amended through UPA government to provide for pass through electoral trust so that donors would park their money with the electoral trust, which in turn would distribute them to various political parties. Both these reforms taken together resulted on, in only a small fraction of the donations coming in the form of checks. And therefore, they say we have now introduced these electoral bonds because, in fact, my Lord, this is at uh, the whole. What was the electoral trust? Electoral trust is now. Is a kind of that was 2013. Semi-anonymous instrument. This is uh, what it is. So any company can form or set up what is called an electoral trust, so long as it is uh, recognized by the income tax department. In this electoral trust, any company can donate. So let's say, let's say that uh, any company has company A has set up an electoral trust. Companies B, C, D, E, etc., they all donate to that trust. And that trust then donates to different political parties. So it's a kind of semi anonymous system. Semi anonymous meaning, of course, in income tax, they have to disclose who are the companies who have donated to this trust. They are also expected to disclose which are the political parties to which the trust has uh, donated. But which company has donated to which political party is not known. Sometimes they may say, well, we didn't say, but in fact, my Lord, what would be happening, I expect would be, every company donating to an electoral trust would say, hey, look, I am giving this trust 50 crores, and we want this 50 crores to be donated to A and B political parties. Normally, that's what is likely to have been happening, likely to be happening through these electoral trusts. So this is also a kind of semi-anonymous way, not totally anonymous, because you can come to know which are the companies who have donated to this electoral trust, and you can also come to know 
which are the political parties that this electoral trust has donated how much money to. So in that sense, there is more information than you have by way of electoral bond. But <clears throat> now, the justification, so the government said that we want to reduce cash. Earlier, people were donating through cash and therefore, we have, they also said that we have reduced this disclosure requirement from anything above 20,000 rupees to anything above 2,000 rupees. Though, my lord, that amendment was only made in the in Income Tax Act, not followed through in the Representation of People Act. But let's assume that it would have been made even in the Representation of People Act. That means uh, <clears throat> the law earlier was that you have to disclose any donations above 20,000 rupees. The political party has to disclose to the income tax as well as to the election commission. Anything received above 20,000 rupees, that has been brought down to 2,000. How will that reduce cash? Because Earlier, the party said that, look, we have received X crores by way of donations, small donations below 20,000. Now they will say, we have received the same X crores by way of small donations below 2,000. That's not going to make any difference because all that the party has to say is, Ki, we put out a sheet, we held, held a rally, we put out a chadar and people put money in that, somebody put 500 rupees, somebody put 200 rupees, somebody put 100 rupees, etc. And we have collected X number of crores from small donations in this manner. So therefore, that is not going to make any difference. If you had said, on the contrary, that every political party will only take money through banking channels and cash receipts are prohibited, they are a corrupt practice or that the party shall be deregistered if it starts taking money or the candidate will be disqualified if he takes money by cash, then yes, you could have done something to stop this menace of cash, etc. This has not stopped the menace of cash. Today, my lord, candidates are still spending many times the amount by way of cash and they are not being caught. They are not being caught, unfortunately. Right. Now, let's get into the submission. Yes, you can just uh, show now, us. Just one more thing. Section 13B of Income Tax Act, Section 2, Now, Lord, coming to the previous orders of this court in this matter. Section 13B, read with? 13B. Read with? Income Tax Act. Oh, read with you, see, through AAA. Please Section 2. 22. Mm -hmm. Now, my Lord, one of the justifications given by the government for electoral bonds was that donors are reluctant to donate openly to political parties because of fear of whatever. Now, so we asked this question under RTI. So, that response, RTI response, my Lord, is in volume 4, page 536. Volume 4, page 536. <clears throat> they say, 2. SO and CPIO Budget Division gave their inputs in respect of Electoral Bond Scheme 2018 pertaining to pre-budget division subsequent to 7-6-2017, the date of assigning the job to the Budget Division as follows. As regards point A and B, no representation or petition or communication has been received from the donors regarding the need for maintaining confidentiality of the identity while making donations to political parties. This, so may, not, uh, this, yeah, this may not be really very relevant. Actually. This may not be relevant no, because it's that. already, they already know its confidentiality is in a way maintained under the... No, so that justification given by the, I'm only showing this to show that one of the justifications given by the government for introducing the electoral bond scheme was 
they said that look we are introducing this anonymous instrument of funding political parties because donors are reluctant to disclose who they are funding to so we asked this question was any representation received from any donor whatsoever that look no but you don't have to have a representation from a donor to perceive that reluctance i mean we're just trying to analyze you know rti response really will not carry your uh, submission any further no i'm but saying that government should have some there's basis. an assumption that look if you okay, if, if you disclose the name of the donor there'll be other political parties who will know that you have contributed to this political party and therefore they might be subject to they are, suppose the donor is carrying on business in the state okay. If the name of the donor is made available to all the political parties, the rival political parties will say, "Well, you, or especially if you are making a so contribution only, to a party which is not in power." Only fear would be from the party. That's the assumption. Uh, that's the logic. Okay. Whether it's valid or not is what we have to decide. Correct. Now, your lordship, may come back to my written submission. I just want Sir, to Prashant show. Prashant you are on. The first argument was right to information under uh, 19. I'm Bar coming to that. I just wanted to lay out the. Few other factors. Now let's uh, look at the, the the material. What no, you no, are interim supporting. Interim orders, my lot Two things. Interim yes, let's see the interim orders. Uh, Where are they? Page fifteen, bottom. Volume. Volume one. Okay. In my written submission, that sir. All right. I've quoted it, and I've given the name of the convenience compilation for the original. <clears throat> We have considered the matter, including amendments to the statutes brought in by the Finance Act 2016 and 2017. We have closely examined the stand taken by the respective parties and what has been stated by the Election Commission in its affidavit, details of which have been set out. All that we would like to state for the present is that the rival contentions give rise to weighty issues which have a tremendous bearing on the sanctity of the electoral process. Of, uh, in the country, such weighty issues would require an in-depth hearing, which cannot be concluded, and the issues answered within the limited time that is available before the process of funding through electoral bonds come to comes to a closure, as per the schedule noted earlier. In the above perspective, according to us, the just and proper interim direction would be to require all political parties who have received donations through electoral bonds to submit to the election commission in a sealed cover detailed particulars of the donors against each bond. <clears throat> the amount of each bond and the full particulars of the credit received against each bond, namely the particulars of the bank accounts to which the amount has been credited and the date of each such credit. Pausing here, Malod, I pointed out that the political party can well turn around and say we don't even know. I am saying that, <clears throat> and, but, and ultimately, Malod, the purchaser of the bond yes. may not be the person who is actually handing it over to Correct. the political party. That's why. That's why. That's why they may say that we don't know. <clears throat> and they can also say that it was not even handed over in person. It was just left at our doorstep. So, <clears throat> or courier to us. Anything they can say. Who is uh, the election commission is appearing before us? Yes, yes. I, I'll just read out. I'll Who's read out for the election commission. 